Teslas have come a long way. A lot of people are still new to owning a fully electric vehicle and many just aren't familiar with them. With that comes the charging habits of your Tesla. Lithium ion batteries are everywhere these days. They're in your smartphones, laptops, and even in the Tesla you own. If you've been using a cell phone for a long time, you might already be familiar with some level of battery degradation. Tesla's lithium ion batteries are a bit different. The level of degradation you see on them is nowhere near the same as your traditional lithium ion batteries. Tesla's batteries are designed and built much differently than the batteries used in most consumer electronics. The engineering and R&D that goes into Tesla batteries is second to none. So in this video, I'll be going over the top 7 things you can do to minimize battery degradation for your EV in order to maximize your range, and what the best charging practices are. According to Tesla's website, the estimated range is based on fixed EPA test data and not your personal driving patterns. It's natural for this to fluctuate due to the nature of the battery technology and how the onboard computer calculates range, also known as the Battery Management System, or BMS for short. The BMS is responsible for looking after the battery as well as managing charging it. The BMS works out the available amount of energy stored in the battery and in turn the number of miles that energy can drive the car for. It does this by using an algorithm that adapts over time, periodically calibrating itself. This leads to the charging practice of consistent charging. Consistent charging habits can help your Tesla's lithium ion battery pack last longer. While charging routinely does not increase the EPA estimated range, it can at least help maintain it. I recommend maintaining a consistent charging schedule at home with a low voltage wall charger to keep your batteries topped up and ready for your trip. Compared to Tesla's supercharger, a low voltage home charger puts less stress on your batteries. A consistent charging routine also helps slow down battery degradation. So it's best to save the higher voltage superchargers for when you're on the go and need to get back on the road. As a side note, it's recommended by Tesla that you have a daily charging limit of 90% or lower. This is done because charging to 100% every single day can put stress on the battery. Also, if you have your Tesla charged to 100%, it's technically less energy efficient because regen braking won't work since the battery is already full and there's nowhere to store the added energy from regen braking. More recently, the Standard Range Plus Model 3s are equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries as opposed to the lithium ion batteries and Tesla says that you can charge these specific Teslas to 100% for your daily needs without having to worry about the long-term effects. My second tip for helping to extend the battery life of your Tesla is to use regenerative braking when possible. I've gotten used to one pedal driving by being able to time the distance of when I have to slowly let off the accelerator pedal when coming to a stop. All EVs come standard with regenerative braking and that helps convert your vehicle's kinetic energy into the chemical energy stored in the battery. This stored energy can be used to extend the range of your vehicle. In simpler words, your Tesla motors act as a generator to convert the energy usually lost while braking and store it in the form of chemical energy in your batteries. As the vehicle moves forward, the energy gathered from regen braking can be used to maximize the range. My third tip is to avoid the extreme states of charge for your Tesla. Avoid discharging your battery completely. One of the first things to avoid while owning a Tesla is consuming the battery's full charge. When there's a chance to recharge your EV, don't allow the battery to fall below 20%, as this could lead to lower battery performance over time. If you don't need the entire range of the battery, don't use it. When I come home from my commute, I just plug my Model Y in and let it charge. I charge my Model Y to 80% every day. You may be thinking that 80% may not be enough for you, but if you think about it, you charge your Tesla whenever you get home from work or school every day and set the limit to 80%. You don't have to charge it weekly like filling up a gas car every week. Every morning you wake up to what is essentially a full tank since it's topped off every single day. Now obviously if you go down to around 0% every once in a while, it's not going to kill you. Just don't do it if you don't have to. And some people say to keep the battery between 20 and 80% when possible. Tesla also recommends keeping your vehicle plugged in whenever possible. Elon even said that a plugged in Tesla is a happy Tesla. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, please drop a like and subscribe along with turning on notifications to stay updated on more videos like this and just Tesla related content in the future. The fourth tip I have is to avoid excessive acceleration. It is crucial not to push the pedal to the metal in electric vehicles such as a Tesla. I know that it's very tempting to just floor it because of the instant torque and the insane 0-60 to speeds that Teslas have. 
Now, while that's very tempting, strong acceleration for long periods results in an abrupt drain of current in the batteries. Heavier acceleration can put a lot of stress on your Tesla battery for the long run. It can also cause the tires to wear out considerably faster. Not to mention the reduced range you will have for the rest of your trip after constantly accelerating hard everywhere you go. Tip number 5 is to precondition your Tesla before going to a supercharger. You'll get a faster supercharging experience, especially in the wintertime. When driving, heat is generated in the powertrain, which warms your car's battery. For the quickest charging experience, consider plugging into a supercharger close to your destination to give the battery a chance to heat up. When you enter a destination into your navigation in the cold weather conditions and supercharging is needed, your car will automatically begin to preheat your battery before arriving at the supercharger to reduce charging times. So basically, the battery is brought to an optimal temperature by the thermal management system when you precondition it. When the battery arrives at a not quite warm enough temperature, it cannot charge as fast. So you'll see the charging speed start at a slower rate and then gradually get faster as the battery gets to the right temperature. Preconditioning allows you to skip the slow part at the beginning. If you have installed a high amp circuit such as a NEMA 1450 or a Tesla wall connector to charge your Tesla, consider adjusting the current to ensure you don't trip the circuit box. If you have a lot of amp hungry devices or just are using a lot of electricity at one given time while the Tesla is charging at the highest amps, you could risk tripping the circuit box to your house. The max charging speed I have is 48 amps because I have the Tesla wall connector installed. Sometimes, since my dryer is on the same circuit box, I just lower the amperage from either the charging screen or the Tesla app to ensure the circuit box doesn't trip while I'm charging my Model Y. It increases and decreases by 1 amp intervals. Your Tesla will remember the number of amps you have set, so just be sure to change it back up if you want to charge faster later. The seventh and final tip I have for charging practices to reduce battery degradation is to try to do slower charging at home. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a NEMA 1450 or a Tesla wall connector installed, you're getting much faster charging speeds than just a regular 120 volt outlet charging. If you're not particularly in a rush to get your Tesla charged, maybe consider lowering the amperage to enable a slower and more consistent charging. Then, at times when you need faster charging speeds, just simply increase them from the charging menu or the Tesla app. You don't have to do all of this, but if you want to ensure very little battery degradation, just look into this more. Another thing is, for example, if you're always supercharging your Tesla, that'll put way more stress on the battery in the long run than just a 30 amp or a 48 amp circuit setting that you have at home. If you don't want to bother with lowering the amperage at home, that's definitely your call. This tip is more geared towards not supercharging every single time, since the added stress it has on charging your Tesla so fast could result in more battery degradation. Overall, charging is probably the most central thing that you do that has a direct correlation between degradation. As I mentioned earlier, the engineering and R&D that goes into Tesla batteries is second to none. These tips that I outlined in this video are just some things to consider as ways that you can help prevent battery degradation. If you found this video useful, drop a like and subscribe for more Tesla related content in the future. If you have some additional tips, comment them below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.